We're good. What's good? Another episode of Compuros Compas Podcast. Su compa Carlos Rodriguez. Su compa El Bardo. Hell yeah. Anda ronco, oh, compa. How? Oh, deja sacar el pinche gallo. ¿Qué chingo estaba cantando o qué? Estaba cantando. Me tocó a uh, gig este fin de semana, compa. Taca, long week. Long week. It was Thanksgiving oh. week. You had to sing the whole fucking week. Yeah, but not because I was with a band, just because I was out there fucking singing. You were singing fucked at up. All, at all the events. You, you got pretty fucked, fucked up, up on... Uh, Every, every oh, day Wednesday the and weekend. Friday. Yeah, every fucking day then. And a, Saturday. It was a long, long weekend. Um, shout out to our boy, Jose Cermeño, who actually uh, yesterday gave me my first Uno fucking... That's crazy. The smoking section hooked me up and, and gave me a little tutorial on how to play Uno and shit. Like, like teaching that old uncle how to play a fucking game with. <laughs> teach this old man don't, what the Don't fuck ever to do? say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's right. They just taught my compa right. how to play fucking Uno. <laughs> 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 fucking embarrassing way. No mames. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. Um, she has her own clothing line. Uh, we want to talk fashion. Yes, sir. I used to consider myself somewhat of a fashionista. Don't, don't say used to, compa. I used do to not because... Say used to. Compa, even Jesse talks shit to me like, ah, oh, bro, all you do is wear hoodies now. <laughs> and I'm like, nigga, well, I'm like over 40. Like, I don't need to be going and, you know, overdoing it like back in the day. But I used to consider myself a little bit of a fashionista, so I'm pretty excited uh, about our, our guest today. Yes, sir. Um, so I want to say hi and welcome to Diana from Desired Fashion. Yes. Hi, thank you for having me. How are guys. you? Good, good. Thank you. How are you guys? Uh, everything good. We seen that you just had a recent pop up this yeah. uh, this past weekend. Yeah, this past weekend we were at the Water Tower for um, Black Friday from Friday to Sunday, and we were also at Chicago Dancing Studio. So we had two pop ups in one weekend. Nice. Yeah. And then um, the whole Desired Fashion. Like, when did that dream start? Because the Diana that I remember. <laughs> From a while back, because I do remember Diana for, for years. She actually won, like, a costume contest. Do you remember that? You know, I was afraid you were going to bring that oh, up. Oh, shit. And it's the first thing he brings I up. Didn't even, and I didn't even and warn her. And you didn't her. ask. I didn't Is there ask. Is there something that I should about? bring up? That's she, what that I remember. That was the first thing she said. <laughs> hey, restart this shit, Jose. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I so still remember. We do not you know what? I didn't even go on that trip. I know. I kind of figured you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I but, was um, still like 19 or 20. Yeah. So, I mean, what's the point of going to Vegas if you're not even 21? That's yet, true. You know? And That's they're more true. strict over there with IDs. Yeah. So, and I really didn't have any friends to go with because they were all like on, um, my age, yeah. 19, 20 at that time. So, but where I was going with that though was that since then, I mean, you always had like this fashion thing about you in my point of view, as far as like, I remember like Halloween's. You would always go all out for Halloween. Like, yeah. And it wasn't like, you know, I fucking never go all out for Halloween. Like, and if I did, I'd probably just wear a mask and shit. But like, okay. she went all out. Like, she would always go all out. And that's where you would see like, you know, the, the fashion route, I guess you would say. Can yeah. I ask what that costume was? Was it a costume, a Halloween costume? It was, a, um, it was like a bodysuit, but it was a mafia, like, okay. costume. So oh, yeah. it was very unique. Honestly, like, I'm... I always made sure I had something different from everyone else because I actually had a moment during European days wow. where during European days, that was like 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a long time. But este, you know, during that time, the only store that we had available was Forever 21. Mm. You know, e-commerce was really not a thing at that time. So I remember I went last minute to Forever 21 and I bought this top. And I was excited to wear it and whatnot. And some girl had the same top at European. Yes, the me tocó que fui al baño and I was inside the stall and I just hear the girl come in the bathroom like telling her friend, "Oh, did you see that girl wearing the same top as me?" Like, I come on and she just like stays quiet. I was like, I, I can't do this again. I can't wear yeah. the same. And you know, girls get very like, "Oh, she's wearing the same thing as me," type of thing. So ever since. It was like, I need to make sure I'm not wearing the same thing as someone else again. Because yeah. that was kind of embarrassing, you know, way, you know, for a girl, I guess you can say. I think it's for a guy. Do you feel no, that way yeah, too? Yeah, for about? a guy too. Hell yeah. The other day we were wearing a fucking jacket and it was the same color. And we're like, what the fuck? You should have told me you wore that <laughs> It color. wasn't even the same color though. That's the bad part. The next the next weekend, it's cold as hell and Kompa's not wearing his jacket. Nah, yeah. I'm like, why did you wear your jacket? Because I thought you were going to wear your jacket. Yeah. No, no, I think it it's a mutual feeling jacket. when it comes yeah. to wearing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. For sure. I mean, especially when you go out it's like 
you want to go all out, you know, when you dress up. So then when you show up to the a place with someone wearing the same exact thing as you, it's kind of like, oh, shit. Yeah. Which, you know, it happens. And is that how... Is that how kind of like your your fashion came along as far as your fashion line? Or how, how did that dream start or, or, um, or start with us with that? So honestly, I think since high school, I had the idea of one day opening up like my own boutique. Okay. Um, I had to wear uniform in high school. So I would mm-hmm. always somehow try and make it fashionable however I could with the accessories. You know how before it was like wear the same color earrings and belt type yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, um, So I would try to accessorize it and make it as fashionable as I could. So mm-hmm. I always had that in mind like, oh, I want to own my own boutique one day. And it was the same thing. E-commerce was just starting. I would see all these stores online, like research and like find out about them. I would buy stuff and... Um, when I was in college, I made a business plan in one of my um, business classes. I had to make a business plan, and it was for the boutique. So I've actually had Desired Fashion, the name, since almost 10 years. Oh, shit. Badass. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it was always there for me to do it. It was just I was scared, I guess you can say, to start it, start it and take that risk. Damn. But you had your plan. I, I mean, had my that's, plan. That's I've had my part. business plan, yeah, since yeah. college. Sheesh. Yeah. That, uh, how many years ago was that that you finished college then? Um, do we really have to say? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, always asks how know, old right? you are without saying it. No, like 10 <laughs> years ago. 10 oh, okay. years ago. Great. Yeah. So you're a practice now, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, was, I mean, that makes a lot of... Uh, yeah. So. That, that part of the whole... Um, I was just talking to, to Bart about, about... Bart's going through this life change as well. And where I'm going, where I want to connect this is... If, if you don't mind me asking, um, talk to me about a little bit about that 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 uh, that fear that you had, you know, because I feel that us uh, we oppress ourselves so much individually to be able to go forward with our our plans and dreams, right? Yeah. Because uh, the the fear factor of uh, it just it's, it's a big plays a big role in in taking a huge step like yours. Yeah. Like, what made you come out of that or or overcome that fear? You know what? I think, honestly, COVID had a lot to do with it okay. because um, it was during the time of COVID that I decided to make that decision. Um, I It was last summer that I was like, you know what? I was really unhappy with my job, to be honest. Okay. And I was like, I, I do human resources, so I love what I do in helping people, but I was just not happy with, like, with it at the moment, you know? And so... Just seeing all these small businesses starting during COVID, I was like, you know what? Like, I like what they're doing, but I think I can, I know I have the potential to do it. Like, why the fuck not do it right now? You know, everybody's taking the risk. What's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a very close friend of mine just kept telling me, just do it. Just do it. Like, I know you can do it. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'm about to be 30 or I was already 30. I was like, I need to do it. Like, what? I don't want to wait any longer. I really want to get this done. And like, lo peor que puede pasar es that I fail. And I think that's that was the main thing. I didn't want to fail because typically, in like, I try and exceed in everything I do. And just thinking of, about failing and that is not something that anybody wants, you know? Right. But I'm like, I'm not going to fail. Like, I think as long as you put your all and you're with the mindset that you tried your best, I don't consider that failing, to be honest. Right. I like that. See that, Gumba? Don't be scared, man. No, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> um, well, yeah, because it, you, you, even if you technically just say fail, I mean, you're not going to fail because you're going to learn so much from, from that, right? Right. Um, and as far as um, that was during COVID, you're seeing everybody doing their small businesses because, yeah, a lot of, a lot of things came up, okay? You know, the fucking gummy worms and yeah and everything it was called michelada mixes everywhere taquisas everywhere and whatnot carne seca people uh one of our own guys had oh i'm gonna go buy this fucking machine to do carne seca but once that came out like did you already have a vision of where like like how does your boutique work as far as like are you the one designing the clothes 
or how do you go about that? Um, no, actually, um, to be honest with you, like as I mentioned, since 10 years ago, I had the vision. Correct. It was just about executing it. And yeah. so, yeah, I had already done my research. Where am I going to get my stuff? Because I'm not designing it right now. That is a goal of mine in the long run. Okay. But like, where am I going to get my suppliers from? Correct. Which I'm a big fan of European fashion. You know, especially um, there was this there's this e-commerce store called Misguided, which they're based in um, the UK. So that's the type of fashion that I like. So a lot of my a lot of stuff that I buy is from Europe. I really don't buy like from Fashion Nova or anything like that. I don't discriminate, but it's just not what I like. Mm. Um, and European fashion is really to me it's amazing. The quality is amazing. So um, I already had I had re researching it. And where I was going to get all my stuff. So as soon as I decided I'm going to do it, I already had my plan of like, this is where I'm getting where everything were you from. Get your merch yeah. Or, okay. And then where, uh, what exa where exactly in Europe, like what's your favorite, like if, what's your go-to, uh, I guess, country or who do you like as far as fashion? Because I know like Asians have a very, very modern fashion yeah. kind of eye, but. Yeah, it's more like um, fashion, like chick, like. Parisian, I think that's how you pronounce it, like okay. French fashion. Yeah. Um, London, you know, Italy, like it's typically like from the areas that I like the fashion from. It's very, it's very different, but all conservative at the same time. Like the styles are very different. Typically in Europe, fashion is more ahead than it is here. Correct. And like a lot of my pieces, when I, that's the other thing I wanted to stand out from the other boutiques from here because, which I'm not gonna give I. I don't design it, right? So I private private label. Like I'm not gonna give away where I get my stuff from, but like, um, a lot of the stuff that I have, you don't see it in the boutiques from here. It's right. very different fashion, so I feel like that's also what makes me stand out in my boutique from all other boutiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of um, boutiques for sure here in Chicago. I, that's another thing that came up. Um, I mean, you go to Pilsen now, there's so many boutiques there now, too, when you walk around Pilsen. Obviously, downtown Oak Street's full of those boutiques there. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, I'm probably going to ask you a lot of like ignorant questions just because I, I, I don't <laughs> know much of the insides of fashion, yeah. even though I do like fashion a lot. Um, so bear with me if I ask some <laughs> dumbass questions sometimes. <laughs> or you too, compa. Um, you started, or it started out, from, and again, maybe I'm just speaking from what I see from the outside. Mm -hmm. It started out as online, correct? Yes, it's currently and online. it's still online. So you yeah. just do uh, pop-ups whenever they come up or something like that? Yeah. Um, I started, um, honestly, it was maybe like um, three months ago, I received a random message from a guy like on the Desired Fashion, like, hey, I'm having a dinner, fashion networking and I just kind of was like I don't even know who this guy is you know like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna reply but I was like fuck it like I'm gonna go what's the worst that can happen right. but honestly like I'm glad I did because he's actually opening up a lot of doors for me in the Chicago fashion like where I was at my first pop-up was uh, fashion week Chicago fashion week which okay. was last month and I got to meet a lot of people in the fashion industry here in Chicago network um so it's opening up a lot of doors for me. So that's that's something I'm really excited about. Nice. Right now. And it's strictly for now uh, female. Right fashion? now it's female, but um, I am kind of doing some men soon. Nice. That's in the works for to bring out some men clothing. That's also why I decided to do a general name of desired fashion. Not like Diana's boutique or Diana's clothing, because that's just generalizing just women's clothing. My my view in long term is to expand to um, you can say like a Macy's where you have different departments of kids, men's, women. Okay. Um, but like my inspiration is really um, this website called ASOS. A S O S. I don't know if you heard of it. It's yeah. in Europe. So I've also been buying from them since like almost fifteen years ago. And um, they have, I've seen how they've grown as far as like, it was mainly women. They went to men. They have not like um, home stuff to buy kids. But more than anything, they have something now called the marketplace, which upcoming designers can sell their stuff there. And that's kind of oh, where I want to go as well, where like you help upcoming designers start selling their things, you know, to get exposed. That's pretty badass. Does that include... Um in the future for you, like, uh, 
designing like uh, interior of houses and stuff like that? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, right. But right now we're probably focused more like on clothing, on clothing accessories. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. The whole men thing. When's the men thing? When do you plan on doing that? Can you say um, that? Or no? Probably before spring. Ah, shit. shit. Okay. Right around the corner. Upcoming spring, Working yeah. Nice. See how that works. Same I mean, th that's one of the things, though, that nowadays, like, it's so many women clothing, but it's like we forget about the men, you know? Like, yeah. Like, they're they're always telling me, I have a lot of guy cousins, so they're like, when are you going to bring guys clothes? I was like, I'm working on it, guys. I just want to make sure I find something that's that I'm going to like, because at the end of the day, you can easily open up a business and just sell whatever. And te da mala reputación. I want to make sure it's really done something I also like, and I think it's good quality. Yeah, to you're going to be you know? pushing something that you want to push. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ah, shit, I was just going to ask you something else, too. I was just going to say, you can't use Eloy's style because it was uh, Carnita saying that it's all just black t shirts or something. <laughs> yeah, Eloy, Eloy yeah, is just all t shirts. Black and t shirts. Like, you open his closet, it's not even black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all t shirts and skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wrote uh, that. Right. Sorry, she's like not, not a fan of skinny jeans. Skinny jeans are are they still in? Is I mean, that an I don't know. I, I I never. I think they are. I mean, really? Yeah, for the most part. If it's still in in Europe, then I guess it's still in, right? Is that kind of like the rule? <laughs> what the rule is over there, or here? No. Um, they're ahead over there. Don't I think it all depends yeah. on everyone's style. To be yeah, everyone honest. has their own style. Like I wear skinny jeans sometimes, and I wear like mom jeans, then boyfriend jeans. So it, like you know. Boyfriend jeans. I had not yeah. heard that one yet. That, yeah, I, was, I was about to say, I know that uh, women's jeans have a lot of different funny Yeah, names, variety. Like I mean, Bell I bottoms see, are back. Yeah, I see oh, that. Like, shit, when you go man, to like, er, or, like, even when you go to Herradura and they wear them big ass Wranglers, and yeah. I'm just like, what the yeah, hell is this shit? That's something else. Um, I had just le listened to this other podcast when you mentioned the whole, uh, the, uh, the whole women's clothing versus the men's clothing and how much more there is for women. I mean, what do you attribute that to? Like, is that like that goes along with like uh, makeup? You know, there obviously women makeup, not too many for men, I would assume. But I mean, is that more of a, is that just like a, a, a woman thing? Then I mean, from your point of view, oh, as, there as, be. as far as having just way more stuff for the female than for the male. I just feel like with women, you get to, like, mix up clothing a lot. You know, like, there's more versatile as far as, like, styling clothing. Men, I mean, men don't wear dresses. They don't wear rompers. They don't wear jumpsuits. You know what I mean? Well, so, some do wear rompers. Well, some do, right. And, yeah. Some do wear rompers. They rompers. don't wear crop tops. They don't wear bodysuits. <laughs> so, like, men's clothing is pretty limited, you know, like, jackets, sweat, um, t-shirts, pants, shirts, it's very limited, but, like, I also feel like, honestly, it's, we're forgetting about guys a lot, because there's a lot of guys that are really into fashion, pero no tienen de donde escoger, en realidad, yeah. so, I think it's more about bringing different style of shirts, tops, jeans, I think more than anything, shirts, I feel like guys wear the same pants very often. Yeah, or they all look the we same. Do. Or they all look yeah, the fucking yeah, same. I mean, it's the same. Pairs. Yeah. yeah, it's a rotation. Like, so, so más de cambiar la, la chamarra top. and the tops, you yeah. know, than than pants. To be honest, that's what I kind of see. Shut, shut. <laughs> I'll let tag you <laughs> Just tag us, man. Um, shout out to my boy Javi Castañeda. He's a big fashion guy. He actually does his own fucking. Oh yeah. He'll go and like okay, like this plain shirt, mm -hmm. and then he'll add. Embroidery, he'll do a fucking flower the, or something. The shoes he was wearing. The, the shoes, they're all, I mean, they're all European. Like fucking, he like, dyed them. Like fucking, red, he dyed them no, red. Like they look like Doc Martens or something. Or something. Yeah. yeah, that guy's... He uh, does. But you're right on that. Like a lot of... Uh, I, I guess we just don't give a shit too much in a way. I think as, so. That's, that's right? what it is. Yeah, so. I mean, there's some that do, of course. And then for us, it's more of a special occasion. And believe me, it only gets worse, Bart. Once you get older, you're just like, fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah. Let me just throw this fucking hoodie on. Yeah. And there's just some guys, I mean, there's guys that wear t-shirts, nothing but t-shirts. And that's cool. But ya se la van cambiando con la chamarra. They, they, they're like, change it up, you know, style it different with jackets. Right. So, it all depends on every guy. And then what's your, when's your next pop-up coming up that you know of? Um, I'm actually planning one in, okay. probably for the weekend of December 11th. It's kind of short notice, okay. but I'm doing it at um, DLS, the studio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. 
just because you know trying to get all the winter stuff out people need last minute shopping and so i'm probably going to get some vendors to go it's kind of last minute but el que pueda if they want to like 11th, uh, that's like in two weeks when would this one be yeah, out this, this will be out after yeah. i think that, that tuesday week, after the this tuesday yeah. After that, yeah i'm good with okay Thank so you. this one's going to come out a little bit after that so that sucks we won't be able to announce. Well, I mean, we'll hope announce you guys went to the. Uh, Whoever listens to this, I hope you guys went and sold it out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah. Put, we'll put it up anyway. And then, um, how far in advance do you start promoting your new season clothes? So, like, obviously, you have your spring, maybe it's coming next. Is that. Yeah, that's probably going to start coming out sometime like in February, March. Okay. Around there, typically. Porque todavía en enero, beginning of. Um, is um february i'm still kind of having some winter clothes because you know really summer spring doesn't really come until like in may Chicago, the end of and may it's cold too yeah it's yeah. fucking 56 yeah. tomorrow or so i mean there's still yeah. winter clothes but i like to kind of change it up as much as i can with the winter and not keep it the same stuff for so long yeah like this past um couple of months i've been kind of slow on it and to bring in the new stuff out just because like my previous job had me like really swamped like i was just too busy with it so era parte por la razón que I left it okay. I was just like I need a break it was too much yeah you know I, I've been in the food manufacturing world for like 10 12 I was gonna years. ask you what, what, what did you do before human resources in, in, but in, in, the, food, in, the, food? in the food industry manufacturing okay. yeah the so. food industry is it's tough man it is it is very tough it's it very is. tiring it's That's a 24 sure. 7 thing you yeah. know so it was and more than anything, human resources is really stressful. Okay. A lot of shit goes on that, like, you know. Should it be going on? Shit that be going on, yeah. <laughs> and then, well, technically, you're you're done with that then for now, 100%. For you're, now. You're all right. in for desired fashion. That's right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Congrats with that. Thank you. That's a big, big move. Um, I also wanted to give you some props because I've seen your stories this past weekend, and I do agree with you. I do feel like a lot of your, I'm a big jacket guy. Like as you can tell, I'm a big sweater yeah. <laughs> jacket guy, yeah. and I did enjoy watching your um, different jackets. Just you know, colorful. I'm a very colorful guy I, too. I, I saw them too. Yeah, I, I started following in, uh, not so long ago when Compa told me we were gonna have you on, and I that's exactly what I saw that sent it out to me. The jackets, the I jackets think it was like, are awesome. One was like pink, and yeah, like, yeah, like bluish or something. I'm sorry, one? is that one? No, this one isn't. No, no. Okay. Yeah. I thought it looked like one. Yeah, but no, no yeah, colors. it looks similar to one of them. But yeah, that's I actually this time I decided to um, slowly start bringing a little bit like more colorful stuff, even though yeah. it's winter. Typically, everybody's wearing black or like dark colors, so you always want you know to bring in those colors to pop your yeah. outfit, and that's just. It's mi estilo. It's not of everyone's, but you know, some people like reacted to it really well. Which I was afraid. I was like, "What if people don't like it?" Because it's very different. It's not something that many people will be open to wearing. It's not like mainstream, like let's right. just say, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, you're not gonna find it at the typical uh, yeah. store. I think that's why. I mean, that's why I like it because I don't want what everyone yeah. can get. Well, exactly how you felt, you know, before you didn't want to run into that same situation where you're wearing the same thing as somebody right. else so you know shopping with like with the type of stuff that you had i mean you're probably gonna be standing out because yeah. they yeah. did stand out right a ton and right yeah. so yeah and more than anything i do like limited quantity like and okay, maybe better. sometimes i'll restock certain things maybe like more basic stuff but ciertas cosas no because i don't want it to be like of course, I wanted to expand and people to wear, everyone to wear it, but by some means you have those people like, oh, I got it here, and like that's it, it's out of right. stock. I'm not bringing it back, type of thing, you know. I like that so, move too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got un poquito the exclusivity, exactly. Yeah. Um, we're gonna be jumping a little bit too, just because I know my compa is a huge fan. We talked about it with your brother, and because I seen your stories as well. Um, but you are a Tesla owner. I am. <laughs> Is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs Me up. Me and Compa are trying to, we're debating still. I was driving today. I was actually <laughs> talking about him again. I was with Compa Hera and we were driving behind one. And I'm like, dude, you could just look at it. I'm like, you could just tell that it's on a different level. I mean, I've, I've driven one, so yeah. I, I could attest for it. But 
Fucking beautiful fucking cars, yeah. dude. I was really scared when I test drove it. I was like scared for my life. I was like, you drive it. Like, I, I like, I believe in you. I, I trust you <laughs> <laughs> that everything's great with it. Like, you drive it right now. Cause it was, you know, we were just test driving it. I was like, I'm not trying to crash it or anything. Right. <laughs> but I do love it. I, it I think it was it, a really it, great decision. Is it everything me. that they say it is? Yeah, for the most part. Um, it's just the, the part of like, if you drive like a lot. Maybe the charging part kind of sucks a little bit. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't at the same time. Because, like, yeah, you're going to have to, like, probably supercharge, but it's so cheap. Honestly, like, I've wasted at most $25 supercharging. And that's because I was at, like, 0%, oh, which shit. is nothing, you know? Yeah, you were already and an empty. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, it's a really great truck. Like, I love it. I I think I made a great great choice. Does your yours have the autopilot? No, I didn't get that. Okay. Yeah, I was Damn like, it. nah, I don't need that. Well, you know, maybe I, sometimes if I get, you a, get Tesla, a little higher, you know, like fuck. <laughs> yeah, if I get a Tesla, <laughs> I need that shit. I be seeing people on the road that are just like chilling, eating. They're yeah. Like eating sushi and shit. <laughs> but you would Driving trust that fucking thing, thing to I just mean, drive you around like that? You sure. Right with that? Sure. I know it's a lot more expensive. They, they, yeah. That's kind of like something separate. And I was like, I know, do yeah. I need that right now? I, I don't know. I'm dreaming big right now. Yeah, I'm dreaming big <laughs> right now. Dreaming it's big. an added charge. That fucking <laughs> yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I wanted to ask because um, we interrogated Eloy about it. And I remember you had one too. I'm like, you know, I'm going to ask you about Tesla because we're, we're infatuated with with the Tesla brand itself, yeah. which is pretty badass. Well, he's the one that actually convinced me. Oh, did he? Yeah, he got his first. And then he's like, just just like get rid of your truck, get this one. Like, I swear it's like worth it, this and that. And I was like, I I drove in it and I was like, okay. I was like, I you think he changed me. my mind. Yeah, he convinced me and uh, he did it. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you something. And I don't know if it's going to be, I should have asked you before if it was going to be okay. And if it's not, you could just wave me off. But... I do want to take your take a little bit, pick your brain on, on the importance of um, mental health because I do see you post a lot about it, mm-hmm. and um, I just wanted to see what your take was on it, and or, or why is, is there a reason that you post about it, mm-hmm. you know, a lot or frequently? Yeah, um, I mean, um, I think it's super important. Actually, I think it's a subject that like not everybody likes to touch about it more than anything. Those who have it and don't like to admit, you know, like depression and anxiety. Um, I, I deal with it myself, you know, I've had, um, anxiety, I have anxiety and like I've dealt with depression. So like, to me, it's a very important topic that, that needs to be talked about more, you know? It's very Um, taboo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially men's health, you know, mental health. Yeah. Men's. Yeah. I agree with you. Especially Mexican men, I would say. I mean, not that I hang out with non-Mexican guys or anything, but... Mexican culture itself, I think, is very right. taboo. It's more like, yeah, suck it up kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and, you know, at first when, like, I wasn't very open about it, but I was like, you know, it's, sometimes it's really important. Like, you don't realize how many people look up to you and, like, talk about you in such a way, and you're just like, I had to open up about it. Because some people think, like, social media you know, everybody's portrayed differently yeah. into, like, the real world, you know? And, like, people think, like, your life is perfect, everything's perfect with you, when it's not. It's really not, you know? And I and um, I, I think I brought out about it maybe a couple months ago or during the summertime, how mm-hmm. I've dealt with depression, anxiety. Like, I didn't want to model for my boutique because I felt, like, self-conscious. And with the, oh, whole so- okay. the whole social media and, like, having the perfect body, you know, like, that... Aff- and I think that's something that a lot of women can relate. You know, you get a affected by like you don't have the hips that are what's in right now you know you don't have this flat stomach you don't don't have the perfect face or whatever so I just kind of opened up a little about it on Instagram and um, I really think that um, therapy is very important I've been to therapy myself I started going to therapy maybe like three and a half years ago and honestly it's been life-changing um I don't think it's something that you go for a couple months and you're good. It's just something that you consistently should go to. It doesn't mean that you're crazy. A lot of people think, I'm not crazy. I don't this and that. Right, but, right. but that's not the point. I, I think everybody needs therapy in their life, you know? And it helps you start thinking about things differently rather than your own perspective of how you want to see things. Sometimes you don't realize that you're not thinking the way, let's say it's a relationship, you know? 
and you're not putting yourself in the position of the other person, not saying the other person's right, but taking in consideration how they're seeing things. Of course. And I think um, that has been really helpful for me in so many ways. Oh, I so. like that. Um, I didn't even know you had, you had put that out, actually. Uh, yeah. that, that was this summer, you said? Yeah, it was probably sometime this summer. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, I mean, how do you see the therapy kind of, is that like a micro dose of like just a little mental break of, of uh, helping you get through in a way? Yeah, and more than anything, sometimes, you know, aunque tengas your parents, your best friends, your brother, all these people you're close to, sometimes you don't open up the same to them as you open up in therapy. Therapy okay. is someone who doesn't know you. <clears throat> and a veces you you might, you know, talk to your family and friends like, hey, I'm feeling this way. Y ven las cosas por como tú se las estás contando y, y te conocen y todo. So they're going to tell you what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. But that's not what you need. You need someone to make you realize what's really right and wrong. Someone that doesn't know you that well, you know. And I feel right. like that's where I have gotten a lot from therapy. This person doesn't know me and I'm just telling them how it is. Y me ponen mi lugar en ciertas cosas que I'm like, okay. That and was, like where you thought you might have been exactly right or, yeah okay. and then that makes you think about stuff like man you know what she's right and like you know like i think overall it has helped me like improve in certain things that i thought i was good in like taking like communication wise y todo and i mean personally from since three and a half years ago it's gotten better but yeah, yeah. i you know it's good to start off and i actually got some close people men i got them into i convinced them to go to therapy and they reached out to me and they were like wow thank you you were right like i feel so much better i'm seeing things differently and this and that and that's what makes me feel good you know they're like i'm glad because like you said in the mexican culture going to therapy please that that's yeah yeah that's been oh. hey, exactamente. That's yeah. yeah yeah but it's it's necessary you know it's really necessary for everyone to go to therapy in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> I, I agree. I think it's, it's uh, either you're going to have some very, very honest friends that are not going to be too, you know, siding with you at all times or you, you need to go see someone. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I, I've always, I like talking about it a lot on the podcast because I just feel that, um, yeah, it, it needs to be normalized. Like it just needs to, uh, I even tell these young, these guys, this guy looks old, but they're young. <laughs> um, and all the guys that, that hang out here, they're they're pretty hey, young, and I, I gotta tell them like you gotta, you know, there's nothing wrong with telling your friend that you love him if he's a guy like you know yeah. normalize like you gotta normalize. I always tell them normalize it because it's very taboo, just with the whole love thing. Or you know, I brought up there's gonna be a, a future. I think is it two weeks ago. I think comes out. We talk about how hard it was for like me and Jose, uh, like the, the fatherly conversation with your dad. How fucking mm -hmm. awkward it is at times, mm -hmm. you know, because they're that hard nose, the right. rancho kind of shit, and we're over here, preppy ass city guys, and it's just different. And and but I I agree with you. You have to in a way, at least I had to see it in a way where like well, I have to see where my dad's coming from. Like I can't expect him to be eye mm -hmm. to eye with me and vice versa, because you know nada que ver. We're black and white totally, right. but it it does take communication is key. Yeah. So I, I like talking about this subject a lot, just so people can come up and, you know, we had a, a great one with my compadre Roca with suicide, same thing, you know, talking to kids, talking to teenagers, and it's such a crazy time, and I guess everyone in each generation says it's such a crazy time, um, but now more than ever with social media mm -hmm. and the portrayal of, of what perfection is or what cool is or what's in, what's not, it, it's it's got to be... It's yeah. got to be tough for, for everyone in a way. Yeah, and it's like you mentioned how you have to try and see how how they were raised, our parents, where they're coming from. And that's I feel like that's what I've taken from therapy a lot too, like to like think deeper into things. Like I was just like with some relatives, my parents or like my uncles or like older people, you know, like I guess I get my therapy stuff in me and I start talking to them in that way. Les digo, es que tienen que entender, you know, like... Él, él quiere de esta manera porque él la sí le enseñaron, no es porque necesariamente es mala persona o, o nada de eso, es como le enseñaron, you know, and it's like, if it's, this person's open enough to like, learn how to love the proper way, you know, like you gotta, you just gotta think about how they were raised, 
Es como decir, ma son machos y sus papás los, los dijeron que tienen que actuar de cierta manera. And right. that's all they know. Yeah. And like, I feel like us, as our generation now, we need to help our parents realize that it's not the best way. And I feel like it, it's helping with social media and everything. I think that's the positive thing about it. Like, poco a poco uno les está enseñando a nuestros papás. Nosotros les estamos enseñando a ellos what's the right thing to do and like all oh, whatever they were thought, um, taught before it's not necessarily the right way you and know? then even then because uh, I, I would kind of say like it's so tough to in this case teach like an old dog new tricks like you know like my mm -hmm. dad's very stubborn and um, at the at the very minimal I think that the least we can do is, is to break that bad right to break that cycle and okay if my parents don't get it because they're older and their ways well well we should get it and we should break that bad and we should right. you know de aquí para adelante you know that's going to change that that way of thinking is going to change the the way you you know you raise your kids is going to change the way you think about education should change you know give everything you know it's always the i want to give my kids everything that my parents didn't but well you know if you analyze that that theory like well your parents not everyone I'll speak for myself. My parents didn't come from much. Mm -hmm. So what, what can they possibly had been able to give me? Well, not much. So then I have to think of it the other way. Like, I have to think about not, not what they didn't give me, but I got to do everything that I wanted, like a better education, uh, direct, uh, a better path. Um, yeah. So we have to take a, a stronger job at, at, um, at changing that, at breaking that bad that our parents and everything, that generational stuff, like, needs to right. change ASAP. Right. Um, but it, it takes it takes certain people. I don't think everyone sees everything that way because of the way you're raised. Right. And because you think that's the way to go, kind of thing. Right. You know? No, that's true. Um, yeah. Not not all, not everyone's gonna be open minded. Más que nada porque son más tercos, eh? as, yeah. as, as we get older, son más tercos, right? And like that's like I well, said, that's I, I all they that's know. I think that's changed the whole even like the. I remember when social media was all coming up, and my mom was like, "Más en el pinche teléfono." Now I think oh. all the older people are they not? <laughs> yes. Oh, Facebook Live. As soon as anything starts happening, boom! Facebook Live. Yeah. Yes. All your tías are walking around with their phone. Oh, fucking Facebook and that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. They, they don't talk shit as much because now they're right there, right? I am done with that. Yeah, the same thing with my parents. The same thing siempre que en el teléfono, que si el otro, I'm like, ama, ya andan en Facebook? I'm like, no. And I'm like, you know, ya no encontré esto, and this and that. I was like, that's what I thought. This fucking, uh, this that's Thanksgiving, we told my mom, like, hey, man, el pinche, pinche pavo te salió con madre. La yo no, en es que vi ahí en el YouTube ah, vi esa señora y la chingada que le metió y que like, yeah. damn alright but you know That's what's badass. so great about it though that they get to reconnect with old friends and yeah. family it's that's the best part like they get so excited like oh mira encontré a de mi secundaria yeah. o me encontró and like I think that's great you know that's they didn't have that form of communication before antes era que la tarjeta llama pon el yeah. número y cuánto saldo tienes or whatever yeah. not. <laughs> so. I think that's the I've always also talked about the beauty of of internet the, the good side to the it. good and the bad because like, yeah. fuck man I mean, they're equal. They're really good things, yeah. and there's some really, yeah. really bad things as well. For sure. But um, yeah, that's uh, I agree. The 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 uh, older people, they get it. They just it's more of a the ideology, you know, the yeah. ideology of of everyone needs to hopefully change with time, and and that's kind of like our job. Like, we're we're more of the again, I'll speak for myself, like the first generation, you know, that that we're here, studied here, and everything, but. Uh, but it's going to take some time, man. I mean, it, as simple as, like, the soccer, you know, fucking chanting puto when they're, you know, <laughs> and, 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 like, you know, you go ask the Mexicans, I, I guarantee you, they're like, well, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? And it's just like, well, <laughs> there is this shit. There is. Technically, yeah. there is. <laughs> I mean, and everything is so, uh, you know, my dad's very, he talks a lot, and, you know, it's just like, well, nowadays, you got to be very, very aware of what you're saying, because yeah, you're going to sure. offend Somebody is going to get offended, especially nowadays. I mean, it's going to be tough to yeah. not offend. And anything you post, anything you say, like, todo ya es... It's under a microscope, right? Right. Yeah. Like... Does that worry you? Like, do you worry about how, how much of... Uh, do you worry about, like, reviews and stuff like that for you and your business? You end? know what? Um, it does. 
I yeah. get so much anxiety because I was like, I don't how, <laughs> how I don't know how I'm gonna handle it if I get something bad. You know, more than anything, like I like I said, I try to do things the best I can so I don't have to have any negativity from anyone. Pero pues va a pasar porque va a haber gente que no más por andar chingando van a they're gonna say negative things and right. you know. I'm ready for it in a way, but when it comes, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I'm ready. I'm going to find you. She's like, say so. I'm about to clap yeah. back. <laughs> no, like I've gotten, like, wait, I've gotten some some negative feedback like one time about something and like I did it as professional as I could to like make it right. And I think that's what you just need to do, you know, be professional and, you know, not get like in your feelings like that's not true or like whatever. Not. It's, it's just going to happen, you know. Yeah. And that's more than any, that was also my fear about um doing my boutique too because i try to keep my personal life as private as i can or my life and just i mean yeah cuando you have a business and anything you you're just not as private you know right. like somehow like oh she owns this store like oh this and that and it's like it's diana from desired fashion hey yeah. i can't get drunk anymore so. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah um, so yeah you just gotta be careful how important is it to you with um and I'm bringing it up because, uh, you know, we talked briefly with Eloy about it. And I can tell the importance of, of, of your parents and, and your guys' influence, I guess, to become entrepreneurs and, and have your businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where, where, where do you stand on the importance of, of uh, your family being so supportive with you? Honestly, I have a very um, supportive family. Like, I think um, more than my dad was... One of the reasons why I also decided to do my boutique, like I, he's like my role model, my hero, everything. Like I look up to him in so many ways. Um, you know, Diego, like all of our parents, immigrants, sin nada, and like he has been really successful. He's just a very smart person in so many aspects. They, from welding to cooking to running a business, de todo, you know, mm. and so. Like he has been a great guidance for me, and and like you know. If it wasn't for him and, like, just learning so much from him, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Like, he's definitely, like, of course, my mom, too. Like, right now, my mom's, like, my number one, one of my number one supporters, both of them, with my boutique. I, ella anda ahí conmigo, ayudándome a coser, a empacar, y este, a todo lo que se necesita para la boutique, you know? So, honestly, like, I don't know what I would do without him. Yeah. They both are supportive in their own ways, and like I look up to them both. Like crecimos sin uh, me and my older brother more than anything. We grew up without them really there. Estábamos siempre encargados like with familiares because they were working twenty four seven. So, you know, some people look at it like, oh, you guys have, you know, they look they look at us in such way, you know, and it's like, you know, it's, it hasn't always been easy because I grew up without them like as much. I probably started seeing them more when I was like nineteen. Oh, a little bit more, but growing up, like, siempre estamos encargados con alguien, like, because they were working 24-7, and, like, I still remember, because my mom brings it up to me a lot, it was, my dad had um, bought a house, had just bought his first home, but we were living, like, in the north side, so estamos en una escuela, like, more by Lakeshore Drive, okay. and we were moving more by, like, Pulaski and Belmont, so we loved our school, we didn't want to, like, move and anything, so I'm here in second grade. I go into the office and I make shit happen. How? I don't know. But like, I said to the list to get our transportation, our school bus transportation. And they were like, all right, just bring your parents to sign. What? I just brought my dad in to sign and we had our transportation. <laughs> and you, were, you kept your school. Yeah. So she's like, siempre has estado. Well, I, you know, I had to do what I had to do for me and my brother at that time, you know, like, because my parents didn't know English well. They were never really available. So in una parte, that's, it had honestly helped me to be very independent. Mm. I had to be, you know. And, like, a mucha gente a veces dice, oh, like, they guarda resentimiento a los papás porque they grow up without them. But I look at it as like, at the end of the day, it's up to you wh- how you want to grow up and be in life. Either guarda resentimiento, you go the wrong route, or you um, do what you have to do, be independent and learn your way through. And that's pretty much how it's been. So. Well, that and, and you also understood what they were doing, right? I mean, you right. understood the sacrifice. Yeah, you know, so. Just the same way. Yeah. You know, you felt without them. Or right. They knew you were, they were not with you. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm forever thankful for everything they've done. And, like, to this day, you know, still doing whatever they can for all of us. So. That's badass. Yeah, 
yeah. yeah. Big props, big props to, to the whole family. Um, another thing I'm going to bring up mm-hmm. that I think is pretty badass. <laughs> um, damn, man, you had Primavera? What? I did. Yes. I yeah. did. Her birthday. Yeah. Just because it was Monday or whatever. <laughs> like, on a Thursday. Thursday. On a Thursday. She does it all the time. You know what? Yeah, um, you know, what's to me? <laughs> ah, fuck it. What are you doing Thursday? <laughs> You're coming through What now. is going on with that? You know, I had an agreement with my dad. Wow. Actually. I told him, si para los 28, no me he casado, you have to bring me primavera. He's like, tío. So... It was like about two weeks before, and I was like, yo, my birthday's in two weeks. <laughs> Is this happening or what? Because at that moment, we had someone working with um, La Firmeza and the studio that somehow had a connection to them. Yes, they, um, I was like, so what? Are you going to bring them? I'm not married. Like, what's the deal, you know? <laughs> yes, they, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's bullshit. Nada va a pasar, right? And um, actually, that one connection was like, hey, don't tell them. It's supposed to be a surprise, but you're getting them. I was like, stop fucking lying. But que mentirosillo, eh? Mentia yeah. mucho. And I was like, you're lying. <laughs> He's like, no, for real, they're coming. And I was like, how? Where are we going to have it? And like, I don't know. Like, he's like, yeah, next Thursday. I was like, we don't have a place. Like, how is this going to happen? And I looked at my ticket out of Eloy and I was like, is this? He's like, yeah, man, he fucking ruined it. But yeah, like, yeah. You're I was just going to say, sure. like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was thinking that right now. Like, that was kind of fucked up in a way, though, right? Like, yeah. wouldn't it have been better for you to be surprised. a thousand percent surprised? Yeah. You know what? It's really Part hard to surprise me, out. though. I kind of run my own surprises sometimes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind of glad um, they told me because um, I got the hall for us. Like, I kind of like helped us to get you know, the oh, hall. Oh, so they didn't have a venue? No, we didn't have oh, anything. Shit. So it was like a week till the party. And I was like, well, where the fuck are we going to have them? Yeah. Yeah, Lutimo, yeah, I reached out to um, Rose Bank. No, not Rose Bank, but Caleb, I think it was okay. at that time. Yeah. Orchidia Hall. Like, I think they're called Orchidia now. Now, yeah. Y ya este, le dije, she's like, okay, sí, todo, ya pusimos in. Um, the stage that Orchidia has now was actually the one made for my birthday. And they ended up deciding to keep it, like, for them. So, oh, shit. it worked out for them at the end of the day, Damn. you know. Making stuff happen. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> Second grade. I'm having a goddamn <laughs> She threw a party with Primavera in one week. That's nuts, man. <laughs> Yeah. That's nuts. And how was so, that? Like, if you, if I got to take you back to that. Like, I mean, was I, it everything Everything that you expected? Did you get drunk and not From what I can remember. Ah, yes! That's always how nah, it happens. No, nah, I had a great time. It was really awesome. Honestly, for a week, plan, a week of planning, it went really well. Everyone had a great time. It was a great experience. That's what they told you. Uh, no, no, that's, I mean, what's, that's what's recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, la última hora was a blur, but I still made it to Ellis afterwards. Yeah, you were good. You were good. good. You were good. Yeah. And what's yeah. the next like milestone? Like as far as like who, who's who's, who's going for your next birthday or what? Uh, honestly, uh, I'll probably have to do it again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really like I really love them. Like as far as groups, like big groups, to be honest, um. Just Probably Primavera is the one for me. Like, I'm going to have them every year. No discrimination <laughs> against other groups, but para tener en mi fiesta, I would have them more than anything. Because I'm, I'm more of a Norteño fan yeah. more than anything. You know how music has been changing nowadays. Mm-hmm. Y como que no está tumbado. buena, pero no como Primavera, you know, right. for me at least. I like Huracanes too. I really like the like cool. old school stuff, you know. Yeah. And more than anything, Primavera too. I like their old stuff. Like, yeah, cuando empezaron con las románticas, I always make fun of this. Ivan from Plevada makes mm-hmm. fun of me because I always say Ave Cautiva. We make fun of that song. As soon as it comes out, we're like, oh, here we fucking yeah. go. <laughs> but um, other than that, I, I love other music. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I had, to, I had to bring it up, man, because I'm like, that's a pretty badass Thursday to party. have. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. It was a great Thursday, Thursday, for sure. Um, <laughs> so next time we're, we might be invited then. <laughs> the primavera. I hope. Tony, I, I, I know he likes playing the slots a lot. <laughs> yeah. Big picture for uh, desired fashion, I don't know, 10 years on the road, is your big thing, like maybe having an actual um, a location and, and things like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something that I want to have. Um, I'm actually right now working on possibly um, having pop-ups every month at the okay. DLS studio. Um, oh, okay, okay. That way people, porque ahorita pues mucha gente, they're like, es que no sé cómo me va a quedar o cómo se ve el material y todo eso. So I'm like, since I don't have a store, I mean, I have 
the studio yeah, there, place, yeah. which it has space to just kind of host pop-ups. So probably that's what I'm going to do on a monthly basis till I get to where I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, or for girls that want to try on clothes. But, but ahorita so va a ser lo que es. Nice. And then um, hopefully before 10 years, I have I an actual I was going to say store. that. I didn't mean it like in a bad way, 10 years, but. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that's my goal. Like hopefully, and then I'll have the men's and kids clothing by then. Yeah, so. like go, go, go buy DLS and try on the, the men's stuff <laughs> when it comes out. Yeah. yeah. Spring, yeah. spring time. Yeah. Spring time. Um, <laughs> where can everyone find you uh, as far as social media? Um, as far as social media, for Instagram, at uh, Desired Fashion underscore. And then um, the website, desirefashion.com. Uh, honestly, Instagram is probably the most that we're active. Yeah. Um, for Facebook, I believe it's, it's at Desired Fashion 1. Okay. That's, those are the, yep. So we're probably going to have you on a lot more times just because, um, like I had mentioned before, uh, you're probably going to be our go-to fashion person. <laughs> for sure. Um, so whatever is like a fashion week or anything like that, feel free to message us and Say like, hey, uh, Fashion Week is this week, and I mean, we're down to do do podcasts to you know promote you and and uh, you know push as much as we can. Yeah, for sure. Uh, your your clothing line more than anything because uh, we're fans of what you're doing and for sure. and uh, like I explained to you earlier, like we w- we want to introduce to whoever we can uh, someone that's doing some positive yeah. stuff out here. So congrats sure. on everything that you're doing. For Thank sure, you. For sure. Great Thank seeing you. you. Um, people, go follow them. Go follow Desired Fashion. A mi compa José Cermeño, thank you very much. Mi compa Bart. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank um, you for having me. That show's badass. For sure. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I'm sure you're going to inspire some young girl too. That Hopefully yeah. some somebody hears this that says, fuck, I, I could do it too. I mean, maybe they have been having their game plan, business plan for the longest. And, you know, yeah, todo, se sure. puede. todo se puede. Yeah, definitely. So next time we'll have... Um, more of a different talks. She wants to try the toad. She we'll talk about. We'll talk about it next time. Oh, hell yeah! But we're gonna probably try the toad. <laughs> so, um, para todos que están escuchando, go pick up a book, learn something. La pura positiva. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Subscribe to YouTube. January. The videos are coming. It's coming. We're gonna have to look good. Yeah, I know. This is well, where you I'm come in, need, Diana. I'm, I'm need, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Check it out. Thank you. Ding dong ding dong dong ding 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 dong 